What's up guys, welcome back to the first official devlog where I'm going to be showcasing progress on my upcoming roguelike dungeon crawler, Thorm. In this video, I will be sharing some of the working art that I've created for the game, as well as how I went about implementing enemies and their pathfinding logic, so stay tuned. If you guys don't know me, my name is Garnet, I'm a game developer based in Australia, and I have been making games mainly in the Unity engine for the past 5 years. So to start the video off, last week the other developers and I met together for a milestone meeting where we discussed some of the things that we want to start getting into the game, as well as some other ideas that we had for gameplay. During this meeting, we realised we should probably get some art into the game, so I started this milestone off by designing some of the art. I opened up a sprite and spent time drawing up some simple characters and level layouts. For these designs, I was taking inspiration from the game Crawl, which has a really nice, clean pixel art style that was similar to the vision that we have for our game. Now, obviously at such an early stage of development, these designs are mainly for proof of concept, so that while testing our game it's a bit easier to see how the combat and the basic character movement would look like, rather than just looking at the squares and triangles that we had previously. After drawing up some mock designs, I exported them into Unity and set up a character animation state to swap from the idle to the running animations as necessary. Uh, at the moment, I only have left and right animations drawn up, but the game will have 360 degree movement, so we plan on having 8 directional animations, similar to what you can see here from The Binding of Isaac. We also plan on having multiple character designs, ideally like a semi-endless possible assortment of designs, where the main outline of the character stays the same, but specific features are able to be altered like hairstyles, skin colours and outfits. This will all change either during the gameplay or going into the game, but this is something for down the line of development. As the game expands and as the individual animation for each character grows, this animation state will most likely turn into a blend tree to accommodate for the various animations that are doing the same thing. After finishing up the character, I drew up a basic enemy design and set it up in the testing scene to see how it fits with the player. For the enemy movement in this game, I'm using a custom A-star pathfinding algorithm that I wrote up. And the thing with A-star is it's actually a shortest path algorithm, meaning that wherever the desired point is that the object wants to move to, it will find the most ideal path based on a series of nodes. However, this can be manipulated to make it slightly more randomised just by changing a few variables inside the pathfinding script. I'll quickly explain how this algorithm works. Essentially, there's a grid of nodes, and for each node, they're connected to the surrounding neighbouring nodes. The enemy then calls the pathfinding setup, which has a method to return a generated path. This method takes in two arguments, the current point, which in almost every case is going to be wherever the enemy is, and the desired point. The desired point is situational, so it can be for something like targeting the player, or if the enemy is just patrolling around, then it can pick a random location to go to. During the actual A star part of the algorithm, it scans the nodes and returns a list of specific nodes that form a path to the desired point. And back inside the enemy script, the movement is updated based on this found path. So one of the biggest problems that we had in the original version of this game was we didn't really have an efficient way to test enemies out, meaning for every new enemy design, we couldn't tell how balanced it was during the actual gameplay. So, like Tony Stark, we learn from our mistakes and build systems for the future to make our lives easier. I decided to build a custom editor tool that takes in enemy data and is able to override them so that we could test them immediately within the scene. As I was designing the editor tool, I realised that the only way to access specific properties of an enemy at the moment is through specific scripts, but when the time comes with multiple enemies and multiple enemy scripts, I wouldn't be able to access those properties without complicating the editor tool. So instead I had to partially replace some of the enemy logic and create a universal enemy script which contains specific data that can be passed easily from the editor tool to the enemy. This will also be useful because there will be instances where the enemy data will need to be accessed elsewhere without knowledge of what type of enemy is being interacted with. So to have it all in one accessible script will be extremely beneficial. The final thing which we're currently working on is the combat aspect of the game. 
From our milestone meetup, an idea that we had for a gameplay feature was how the weapons were going to work. And the idea that we landed on which quickly became a group favourite takes inspiration from Breath of the Wild, with a similar type of weapon interaction through weapon durability and a weapon tier system. This seemed like a really fun idea with the weapon durability being something that we haven't really seen in a roguelike game yet, which could introduce some really fun new types of gameplay. So that's all I have for this video, I'm super excited to keep developing this game and sharing the progress with all of you. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel to keep up to date with the progress on this game. I also post weekly game development related videos, whether that's tutorials or my own challenges, but I would love to hear some suggestions from you guys, so feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know what type of videos you want to see in the future. Thank you all again for watching and I will see you again next week.